Oh, I better change my... Welcome to the Sunday Roast. It's episode 20, and we're still, still, still waiting. But at least for the next hour or so, you can wait with us. It's the Sunday Roast. Welcome to the the Sunday Roast with Mike and Danny. Then we should sing along. This, this is Danny, and this is Mike. Yeah, there we go. And we're kind of strange. We're in the tub, tub, and we drink a lot. At least one of us does. This is not Mike's body. It's Ron Jeremy. But that is Danny's. And that's really gross. Thanks for watching the Sunday Sunday roast. roast. Here we go. We love love our fans. fans. And here's Danny's mom. Horrible woman. His name's Michael. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. And what am I? <laughs> what am I? And he's a Jew. You can tell oh, he's a Jew. Look ask at him. him who's his daddy. Magical moment. If someone hears that for the first Danny. time. <laughs> it's so close I can almost taste him. <laughs> and now, the moment you've been waiting for. It's the Sunday Roast with your hosts, Magic Mike and Danny the GFP. The moment that nine of you have been waiting for. We we, we know that we've lost two-thirds of our audience to a competitor. Um, <laughs> swines. <laughs> Welcome to the Sunday Roast. Epis- is this episode 20? XX for all the Romans out there. So we we do this once a week, so that must mean that we've been doing this for twenty weeks. That's like almost uh, half a year. It means we've been doing it for too long. My God, that's what it, what it means. And and you know we, th- I think that this show is not getting any bigger, and it's fine. We don't need it to. It's not getting any smaller either. It's the same twenty five people every single week, and we love you, the roasties. Yeah. The well, roasties we love most just, of them. Yeah, I mean, Callum's in here. Well, Callum's in here. Uh, we'll we'll see how long I've been in lasts. touch with Paddy Power to see how long it is before he gets his first time out. Kate Johnstone, good to see you. Michael's in here, MJL. Um, We've got someone um, from Malawi. We are the number one Malawi. Malawian podcast. We we are, like, you, like you've told me, I mean, we, we used to, the, the Gooners pod, when we used to look at where our views came from, we were huge in Mozambique um, and Estonia for some reason, even though we, unlike you, had never had Mark Poom on. Or, uh, no, you didn't have Mark Poom on. You had uh, the other guy. the other Rami keeper. Shaban, Rami. Egyptian legend. It's his but, birthday the other day. No? Yeah. What did you do to celebrate? I ate some uh, eggs and basuma. God, if which is this, is this I've, I've messed that up. Eggs and basuma? I don't know what the fuck it's called. It sounds disgusting, whatever it is. <laughs> Well, welcome to everybody in the chat. Thanks, Loki, for showing up. Cy, uh, Kate, everybody, Mark's in the house. Got a new uh, person, John Hazy, as well as who else was in there that was new? Peter, Jaguar, Kumwenda. There you go. I don't deserve right, a fucking right. medal for getting that right. You should, you know, very good. Very good. Ah, good. What are you drinking? Uh, this would be just Gatorade Zero, lemon, lemon lime. For hydration purposes, um, had a bit, bit more wine than I should have on Friday night, and uh, and oh, the uh, wait there, hold on, I'm <laughs> listening to the for the listeners and their gasps. Of, <gasps> Unreal, Billy, I can't. No, what? Well, I got started on on you know we on Friday night was a, was a great night. We did uh, we brought our our um, our charity auction the, the the raffle for the '89 shirt to a, to a close after about six months of fundraising. Uh, hit our targets, raised over twelve thousand five hundred dollars for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, and then the best part of it is giving the shirt away. And did I win some, uh, some art from Ruth Beckel. You did not win. You did enter. Uh, the person who won entered once. Some people had up to forty different entries, which which is amazing. It blows me away. It's a very very mm. kind, very, very kind large donation. Them. But I don't think but, they care uh, though, do they? It's all about giving, not receiving. It, that's true, and a lot of them that's say like that. your love life. They're like, they're like uh, you know, even if there wasn't a prize, we would donate, and and we'll never know whether that's true or not, but but it's appreciated. 
So, um, so yeah, we gave away the shirt. The, the, the grand prize winner was a Robert Prestige of Coventry, England. So congratulations to Robert. And, um, and so I started on the champagne during the pod and, and then it just, it, it evolved into red wine and Taco Bell and, um, and yeah, that was that. So, uh, the last two days I've just been rehydrating and get, getting myself back to normal. Um, I am not going to wear an arsenal shirt until we this is let me guess it's fucking sutton united isn't it this is uh, the mighty might the study sutton united i'm supporting them i'm throwing all of my energy my considerable energy behind sutton united until we announce these signings we where is gabby jesus where is the fucking butcher um i'm tired of waiting i'm done with this club done you can go can go you know, I want it all, and I want it now. I want it yesterday. I, yes, it's like uh, it's like Queen. I, I want it all, and I want it now. And and I'm going to support Sutton United until we do. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm done. So, what do you think about the the Sam Hart signing from Oldham Athletic? Massive. Uh, and uh, Jack from, Rose from Walsall. Are you happy with that one? Are the, is that Sutton United uh, add some new players that I didn't know? About? I am such a huge you. Kawame Thomas ourselves. from from Wrexham. That was that was a deal and a half. You've actually one of your players has gone to the mighty Peter. But come on, the posh, the posh. All I know is that Craig is our is our skipper. He's our captain, former Arsenal player, and um, and and we're we're football league through and through now. We're no more no more of this non league bullshit for us. Nonsense. No, we we uh, we went to Wembley last year in our first year in the Football League, and the only reason we didn't win a trophy there is because of Jorde Ose motherfucking Tutu, who also used to play for for Arsenal, but no more. Absolute shit. And uh, and I, yeah, I'm I, I was um, I was gutted. Gutted. I was absolutely gutted when that happened. But uh, so yeah. I take it you fondly remember uh, Sutton United's FA Cup run back in the day. Oh, well, that was what started it all for me, you know. What round did I get to? Do you remember? The fourth against us. No, it was fifth. the fifth. Fifth. It was the fifth, and then Lincoln uh, in the in the quarterfinals. But yeah, the uh, that was what began it all. My love affair with with my buddy Wayne Shaw, who we share the same outfits. Did you know he ate all the pies? He did. Well, no, no, it was it was not only a pie. when he was told to. It was not a pie. <laughs> it was a pasty. Past it. Guy, you got in trouble for that, didn't you? That stuff looks like the same color as my piss. I don't know if that's helpful. Well, see, I, you know, I when I eat pizza, I wear a red shirt. When I drink lemon lime stuff, I wear yellow, mm. uh, because th- there's a ninety five percent chance that it's going to end up on my shirt. So, um, well, there's a good question from Mark. Uh, Mark says, "Can you ask the guy who won if he wouldn't mind putting the shirt on and reenacting the Michael Thomas goal celebration?" Look, is what, he what... less than fifty? Because if he isn't, he's not doing it. He is. This is uh, this. This is what he said when I when I said, you know, who are you? Um, I was actually glad it wasn't like one of my mates or somebody that I know because then you get all this. You know, I mean, I did it on a randomizer live on a YouTube no channel. Um, but uh, you know, people will still go after you for stuff. Can like he'll that. do it? Is he an Arsenal fan? He, uh, yeah, he is. He said, or is he a Liverpool fan? He's, got it, he's gonna burn it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm 27 years old, became Arsenal fan about 20 years ago, about 02 or 03, uh, down to one of my cousins who influenced me to be a Gooner and been an Arsenal fan ever since that moment. And uh, and so the the lad, and I'm going to call him a lad because he's almost half my age, uh, now has a pretty unique piece of Arsenal. And once it's in his hands, I take a big breath out. I got it to its final destination safely. I didn't eat it. I didn't spill anything on it, and um, and and then he can do what what he wants. I mean, he can take get it that fucker straight in the washing machine, get all that <laughs> shit off it, and then put it on eBay for twenty five quid. Well, <laughs> no fucking around, Feinberg. Get your twenty five pounds back. Money. <laughs> Hello to uh, Melvin and and, and Kate. Uh, I will Hello, tell Melvin. you how I lost my weight when when I actually don't gain it all back which i'm in the process of doing right now it, it is more than halfway back and i'm just i'm i'm gutted over that as well well stop um, drinking and stop eating 
Oh. That's the easy bit. Is that what we do? Okay. See, I'm not fat because I eat. I'm fat because I don't fucking move. I didn't used to be. I've been sat down for 30, 30 years next April. Is it? Yeah, 30 years next April. I've been sat. I went, that's it. I'm never standing up anymore. And then uh, slowly over the years, I got fat. Now, when George lived here, Sean's mum, she lived here from 96 to 2001. Um, she pooped out a baby. He's coming home next week. <laughs> and then uh, but when she cooks, she makes enough for three. And I just kept eating. When and then when she went, me that, you telling me to just stop eating and drinking is like me telling you to just stop sitting. Well, I mean, you know, it, it ain't I can go easy. to the moon, it and I won't be easy. sitting; I'll be floating. <laughs> so there you go, up your bum. So yeah, I was talking to Sean's mum about this the other day because she's uh she eats too, she says she eats too much and she's struggling because she can't move anymore either. I mean, she's only forty; I think she's forty six, or some number between forty four and and. 48, I think. I don't know. And then uh, Shen needs smaller portions. But I don't ever get hungry. Like today, I had some grapes, a banana, some cherries, and then I had a pack. you know what corned beef is? Yeah, of course we know. Oh, good. Yeah. You I just asked the Jew beef. if he knows what corned beef is. Don't don't be racist, Mike. It's not becoming of you. I had some corned beef, four slices of corned beef in some mashed potato. And then after that, I had... <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. and then Manny Sweetberg that. is telling me not to be uh, racist and, and, and asking me if I know what corned beef is. And then, uh, Benny, no ask me next if I know what gefilte fish is. I had no idea that corned beef was associated with, with, with my Jewish brethren. Is it? Oh, or... it's like the number one staple at the delicatessen. Really? Yeah. Well, that is that is very good. I um, prefer ham, but you're not going to get ham at a Jewish delicatessen. Well, you'll get it at you make... you can you make a hammock out of corned beef? That's what everybody wants to know. <laughs> a hammock? Oh, fucking up. Is that a is that a yarmulke that you like lie in and relax in during the summertime with a No, with that's a, what you made lemonade? last time. You you made a yarmulke out of ham, didn't you? So you had a hammock. Oh, oh, yes. So I can you I make a corned beef That doesn't work, does it? <laughs> and lay lay in a ham a hammock as you're eating it, looking corned wearing beef it. curtains. <laughs> so go on what's your three tips for for losing for losing weight because you did so well at it well yeah because it's it's something that's really kind of unsustainable unfortunately for me but it's it's cal it's it's counting calories uh you know limit yourself to to about 1500 calories a day which is not easy but once you get into the routine you stop wanting it you start you know being okay with it obviously you you can't be drinking when I lose weight, I'm not drinking. Um, and usually when I start drinking, it's when the weight goes back on because I'm like, ah, fuck it. And get sleep. You have to be fully rested because when you're not fully rested, um, that's when your whole schedule and your whole routine and everything goes to hell. And that's that, that's what happens with me. I got to, you know, I, I have a very busy, busy, busy life and everything's competing for my time. And I just don't know how to allocate time to things that, that's because you wake up in the middle of the night and go, I've got an idea for a podcast and spend 15 hours doing it. Fantastic podcast that it was. If anybody doesn't want to go and watch it, the gist of it is we're paying less in money and wages now than we were five years ago. That's the gist of it, isn't it? Three or four years ago. And and obviously I have a much better team. Oh, 2019. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of vices and most of them are, uh, you know, hobbies with like, interests and in and 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 then i also have i work in, a, in an industry that pays me on commission so you know i can't just put in an eight hour day and be done with it so i have to you know i'm constantly working if i'm not working i feel like i should be working uh, if i'm doing arsenal related stuff i'm taking time away from my family uh when i'm with my family uh which i love doing it's it's just this never-ending thing i have i i, I have it, i'm not i'm not well when it comes to like running my life and taking care of myself. And that's why, you know, I end up in these, in these binges where you need to come and live with me, Michael, you need to, I tried live. that. I tried that. And it lasted it about helped. four hours and, and we spent one of them shopping for candy. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't really <laughs> shoplifting the Snickers or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. We spent an hour digging crunchy bars out of your sweat pits. <laughs> I can't even put trousers on at the moment. Fucking hell. And, and, still got and you, decided, you decided to just skip over the next 30 years by taking me directly to a cemetery. <laughs> yeah. We might as well cut out in the middle, man. There's a hole there. 
<laughs> Dude, I, we we obviously documented it and talked about it and, and and did a pretty good job of spreading it. But like, we should have sold tickets to that day. Like, we should have sold. Guided like, tour. Yeah, like, like this is this is the graveyard where I tried to have you killed. This is the bench we sat by and swapped heads. Oh, we, oh, this we is the, yeah. No, we can do <laughs> outland. No. We can do that, and in, 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 yes, we could do that now. And 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 it's like the the Beatles tour in, in Liverpool, where they're like, "This is where they did this, and this is where they grew up and went to school. This is where Mike almost died. Uh, this is where they they took the picture and switched their faces." But like, we should have had it would have been like going to a zoo and watching the animals. Like 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 everybody just come to the Huntington train station, stay fifty feet away from us, but feel free to take all the pictures you want. Uh, you know, you can uh, you you can shout stuff at them if you want. You can shout topics for them to talk about. Uh, it's the only thing, Kate, that I'm better at than 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 focusing in and losing weight in a short period of time is gaining it back. I'm really good at that. Um, and currently, you just, you just need to not have I'm, carbs because carbs turn to sugar. Well, and sugar. Your body I, goes I'm aware of that, and I, I've I've done keto and and just you know. Atkins back in the day uh, before the guy slipped and Died. fell on ice, but really had a heart attack. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Ooh, there goes the brand. Brand. <laughs> well, and I love, I mean, I love, I love beef. I love steak. I, like beef. I love ham. I, lo I mean, yeah. I could, I can eat for a long period of time without having carbs and be fine with it. But eventually it starts to creep in. A little bit, but like that's the, probably the most sustainable thing for me. But uh, you know, I, I've I've just been off my off my rocker lately, and and uh, you are a busy boy, you know. And and then when I travel, I mean, forget about it. I'm not I, I'm not going to calorie count, and not. I mean, I, this sounds like an intervention getting ready to happen, but I'm not going to calorie count. I'm not going to not go to the pub and enjoy myself when I'm in London. And I've just been in London a lot lately, <laughs> so it's like. It's you know now I'm I'm another not eight, seven or eight weeks away from another trip to London. In the meantime, Baltimore and Orlando for the Arsenal. It's it's just going to be a hard summer for me to, to to you know. But there may be some developments on the weight loss front over the next twelve months or so that could be uh, dramatic. So we'll we'll just have to stay tuned. So what's See your comfort food then? Mine is anything and mashed potato. Tesco's do. Bam, Tesco's finest mashed potato. I, I don't know. I don't check how much shopping costs. I just buy what I want. And then uh, um, I have a tin of tuna in that, or I'll have now corned beef. I've avoided corned beef since I was about 10 when I found a little bit of curly intestine in it. And my mum bought me around some corned beef about six weeks ago. And I went, I'm not eating that shit. And then I'd look, I went, oh, this is lovely. Now I eat it raw. Raw? Is it raw out of a packet? It's not raw, is it? I can eat it out of the packet. I can eat no, it with no corn. Potato. Corn beef is cooked, but it but it can be cold. I mean, it's not. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be hot. Mm. So I am. Um, I, I have my mashed potato. I microwave it, and then I get four slices. It only comes in a pack of four slices. I mix it all in. A little bit of butter, and then I eat it out of the bowl. No washing up. In fact, I use the same spoon to eat it out of the bowl with. Two days in a row. <laughs> Didn't even wash the spoon. <laughs> What I, I live I, on my own. I do what I, I want. It's great because I can leave something half eaten or half drunk and come back to it three days later, knowing no one's touched it. It's it's perfect. I mean, I I I get my ass kicked for doing that because I have you know a wife who doesn't like food lying around. But I love I love I love procrastinating Womble's comment. I mean, it's it's very intelligent, very true, very uh, you know good advice. I could give the same advice and look at me, but like, yeah, I, I know what I need to do. That isn't the issue. It's not like I'm uneducated about dieting and weight loss and how, you know, the body works. I mean, there's no one that knows how the body works more than me. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just not happening. So, so uh, if we do, Mark says there, uh, a great venue for a Sunday roast live event. I think if we did do a live event at the Sunday, it's got to be at a carvery, hasn't it? On a Sunday. <laughs> That we should, or at a pub where they're serving Sunday roast, um, and you can have a placard saying "roasties this way," and then people will come <laughs> thinking you're going to get roasties. No, it's for our roasties. They're they're all turning up on a minibus. <laughs> They've all met up in a Norwich bus With station. Their, it's like I'm not going to use the 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 uh, the stereotype, but it's like you know when a bus of a, of certain types of tourists come off and they've all you got can their say cameras. Japanese tourists, <laughs> and they're taking. Them to, they're taking 
<laughs> taking pictures and gawking at the, you know, oh, yes, uh, it's Mike and Danny in their own natural habitat uh, of, of Huntingdon. Well, I don't actually like Carveries because I live near, they've got a couple in Peterborough and uh, Loki will know. Pete Rose is a shit hole full of scumbags. And those fuckers, it's like five ninety nine a plate or whatever. I can't remember. I just give them my card and I usually pay for everything because they're all too cheap to pay for themselves. People that come with me, not the restaurant. And then uh, at five ninety nine, and they will go up and they will fill their plates two or three times. You would swear these families of heifers who all come in on a minibus, you'd swear they haven't eaten all week. The way they scoff through it piles of they even mix foods that shouldn't be mixed like you'll have roast beef with gravy and then they'll have cauliflower cheese a big wall of that plopped on top of it you think you people i can't even be and then there was went to one of them the um oh, i can't remember which one it was the uh the cheapest one in the uk one of the other one was was um, couldn't get a booking and these fat fuckers there was flies and they they, they were just eating there's flies landing on stuff <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. Oh, I nearly had the name then. Oh, I can't remember. Someone in here from England will know. Um, Kate says, I'm hoping to make it London this season. Oh, good. Um, it's trained down, like- trained down from Scotland, and uh, and and hopefully, if it if it happens to coincide with uh, with one of my trips, I would love to to buy you a drink of your choice at the Tollington or somewhere else. But uh, chocolate and gin. That's what she wants. Chocolate flavored gin. You can buy her a chocolate flavored gin. Oh. Womble says, uh, next up, what is spam? Spam is best spam, to be avoided. Spam, spam and more spam. <laughs> Who says English Callum, or Americans don't understand English humor? Callum um, keeps asking questions about um, about being kicked out of school. I was very, very good at school. I, I didn't get kicked out of school. Do I, I look like a, do I look, Callum, do I look like a guy who can, wants to, or knows how to fight? I mean, I... I got in one fight, I think, in my entire... And me. Like, I only had one. My fight, and it wasn't even in school. It was, it was after Huber school. <laughs> after and it was what? a guy who, who had been and then became, again, one of my best friends Like since I was one year old. We were just fighting about something, and... and 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 we got out of Hebrew school, and we just started punching each other. And I remember his parents, his dad, like, standing over us and, like, telling his son like get him him." i was like what is happening right now (laughs) fucking daniel buddyansky oddly i remember the name of the bloke i had a fight with Uh, there used to be this thing you'd get um lollipop sticks about that big about as thick as your finger thin about that that, anyway so you get three of them you'd lay them over each other and you put another one through the middle and then it would stay together so we'd go around and pick up all the lollipop sticks sean mccullop currently lives in huntington had a twin sister he pushed me over as I went to get mine. So I got up, I ran after him and laid into him. And then one of the teachers came along and went, oh, we're only playing. And we both got in trouble for it. And I only ever got put on report once because it was in uh, in French. I wasn't very good at languages. Went in there and Mr. Puttock, French teacher, St. Peter's, probably 1987, 65, 1984. And I used to come to the, walk into the classroom and go, Sweetman, out. And I'd have to go and sit outside for the whole one hour lesson and then was uh, it a hashtag? Was it Sweetman out? <laughs> like it, it could have been. He, he, he didn't like me. And then he, I got sent to the headmaster. So I think another teacher came past and said, "Right, go to your head of year." So I went to see Mr. Dilly. Sat outside of his office. I think if school closed about half three, secondary school. I waited there till about four o'clock, and he wasn't there. So I went home, and I got put on report for not waiting there. I said, "But school was empty. How long was I meant to wait there for?" And that was the one time, and I did very well at school. Passed all my exams, and then after that, I went to uh, a college, in, a co- kind of college in Cambridge. I did that for two and a half years and got fired. They couldn't get placement for me, Mr. Feinberg. That was the problem. Everyone else got placement, and they couldn't get placement for me. I mean, I did. What, what did that mean? Things, exactly? but... like they, they couldn't find a, a school that you could go to. I mean, I was seventeen, eighteen, nineteen when I was there. No, it's Cambridge iTech information technology center and they'd get they had one person go and work on the channel tunnel and they had another one go and work for ibm and things like that and you'd get people go out and placement to uh, hone their their skills of computers electronics and all that kind of stuff databases spreadsheets programming i did all of that and then passed all the tests and then uh, they couldn't find anywhere for me uh, i think it's because i was sat down and they didn't like me 
You know, we I, might could, have been, I might have we, been in tra- I might have troublesome. We could have met 35 years ago uh, if things had gone a little bit differently. The, and we just the, started a podcast then. We'd be doing our 35th year. <laughs> Welcome to episode 1,924 26. of the Sunday Roast. Um, <laughs> I mean, b- before we moved to London, like the original plan for his for my stepfather's business, which ended up being in in London proper in Mayfair, actually, mm-hmm. um, was that they were opening an office in Cambridge, and we were going to be moving to Cambridge. And I, I mean, this is why one of the reasons why I was resisting it so much because they're like, you're gonna you're gonna have to go to an English school. You're at an age where you're like in between the fifth and sixth form. Um, I mean, I nothing against english schools although i'm sure many of the english people in here might might have some comments about their experiences but like to go from an american high school into an english school like proper uh with the uniforms and and all of that in the late 1980s was not something i really wanted to to deal with plus cambridge just didn't sound as exciting to me as london but i didn't know that you lived there back then um, well I'm, i i didn't i worked there I worked there from uh, September 1987 to the summer of 1989, and I got fired because the government used to pay. Living in Huntington, me and um, Julian, who was a friend of mine from back in the day, uh, used to pay for us to get a taxi from Huntington to Cambridge. And so I rang up the taxi firm. It was when it was I was starting to do stuff with the year. I was at my beginning my. I don't know, so that had been set 87 to 88, 88 to 89. I was coming up to the end of my second year, and you only do a two-year course, and nothing, I wasn't getting any jobs or any interviews or anything. It was their job to find work for everybody because the amount of money that they spent and all the qualifications, it's called City and Guilds. I think I got seven of them. And then, uh, so it's to get a taxi. And so I rang up the t- taxi company and I said, uh, I won't need your taxi for two weeks. And they said, Why? I said, Well, I'm on holiday this week, and the week after that, I'm going to be ill. <laughs> And they went okay. I got a phone call I'm from the. Ill. I got a phone call from Dave Fenley, who was the into the manager of of Cambridge I Tech, and he went uh, and told me what the tax. I said, "Yeah." He went, "How do you know you're going to be ill in two weeks?" I was just guessing. And he went, "Right, you're fired." And I said, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" He said, "What?" I said, "Well, you could have told me. I've just got up and got dressed. You should have told me half hour ago. I'd still be in bed." And that didn't help at all. And then I, then I got fired. And then after that, I've had two more jobs fired from both of those. And that was it. My what is, the, three jobs. what is the difference in English? You know, I mean, I, obviously, I, I'm a student of the of the English, pro, the proper English language. Um, yeah, what I mean, is, if you've got your pipe out then. What makes you say fired rather than sacked? Like, like what is there a difference? Or is it just whatever you feel like saying at that moment? Because I... I, I, think- I the same thing I hear with people saying field instead of pitch. Like, like I, I go out of my way to try to speak like you guys, Ooh. and um, you can say either. No one, no one would query if you said sacked or fired or let go or given. It's the just boot. two words that mean the same thing. It's not. Yep. It's not that one is an Americanism and no. one is is the proper way. No, I don't of saying think so. It. It's, it's always no. surprising me. You know, I'm, it, it, people say you know I'm a fan as opposed to a supporter. Like, like. They're just interchangeable as far as you're concerned? Yeah. I'd have thought so. Uh, well, yeah, you can be a fan of a like a, a band, but you couldn't be a supporter of a band. But you can be a fan and a supporter of a club. Well, yeah, I mean, in, in the in the football vernacular, it's just you know, I, I I always hear people saying I'm a fan, and it, I don't know. To me, uh, and this is because I'm super defensive and 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 always wanting to try to fit in. For to me, it sounds super American to say. You know, I'm a fan of what they're doing on the field. Um, right before Arsene Wenger got fired, I mean, like it's it's, I don't know. I see, but but that's me. I like saying things differently just because of the fact that I mean, no one over here would say sacked. No one over here would say pitch. Uh, so I prefer that because everything about football that I love is that it is not the same as what it is over here. Um, Petito says fan and supporter is different. How is that, Petito? Well, um, I, 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 I would imagine the, ex, the, ex, I mean, you, you tell us, but I would imagine the, the explanation is going to be from those who say, you know, oh, if you support a team, then you support the team all the time, and, and so on and so forth. You know, people, because there's always an argument about are you actually a supporter if you're talking all that shit about our manager, our players, our, and then that opens up a whole other debate that, uh, that we don't need to get into. Um, but no, that's a. It's a good thing. There was a comment earlier about 
<laughs> from Tremaine Johnson. One fight your whole lives. I don't believe it. I didn't say that I haven't been in confrontations before. I'm talking about like physical fist fight type shit. And and uh, and I think is one that I can remember. There might have been one or two more, but like, and, and I was definitely a bit of a bully at a particular stage in my life. And it was the same shit that like I got gracefully taken away from when we moved to London. But like age 10 to 14, I was just headed down. I mean, I was vandalizing people's yards and houses and stuff because I was just this frustrated kid who, you know, who whose parents had gotten divorced. By the way, the uh not that I'm counting, but Monday will be no Tuesday will be the uh uh 41st anniversary of when my parents got divorced. July 5th. They got married on July 4th. They got divorced on July 5th, 15 years later. Uh not that I'm counting. But anyway, the um, so I wasn't, a good, you know, and I found people who I thought were weaker than me because I was not popular. I was, you know, pretty, pretty much didn't have a whole lot of friends. And then I would find people that I thought that I could be better than and started kind of bullying them a little bit. So I, I don't know that it was really called a fight, but now the fights I get into, I use my words. I use my wisdom and my my sharp tongue and my fingers, but uh, but yeah, um, not a big fighter. I'm a lo- I'm a lover, not a fighter. Well, that's debatable as well. <laughs> I'm a lover when someone allows me to be. <laughs> sound sound like you've had a a a disturbed childhood. I was my childhood was great. I was friends of all the cool kids, and I was the. At what the, point the, did we the, flip? <laughs> Which it switch? No, I'm just kidding. And I was friends with all the nerdy ones, and I was friends with all the hard ones. But I was the funny one in class all the time. But I got on with absolutely everybody. Much if like you, now. If you need any more psychologically obvious thing about me, it's it's that I don't really remember much from before I was eight. My parents. Nor do I. Were... I don't remember anything from before you were eight. Well. I remember a handful of things, but it, I've, only, I've only known you about five years. <laughs> the from eight to fourteen, I was just on a downward trend. I mean, I, I I didn't realize it at the time, but I just I, I I shudder to think what would have happened to me if we didn't move to London. But when we moved to London at fourteen, it's 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 what changed my life, and I think it's pretty clear that's why I have this this attachment to to Arsenal and London and everything English is because it essentially is the one point in my life that I can, I'm getting really serious here, uh, that I can look back on and say, you can hold on to with, with happiness. It took me off of this track and put me, well, I don't know if, if you can say I'm on that track or not, but it put me on a Slightly different elevate, track. Elevate you to sli- two degrees higher. <laughs> where, where I learned how to like at least relate and have fun and, and have a sense of humor and enjoy relationships with other people and uh and 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 that's kind of where where my current you know thing comes from but that, i i just i don't know i might i might have ended up because usually when you when you vandalize well, like when you take out your frustration in life through vandalism it that like if you don't get caught or if something doesn't change it gets worse so i you know I'm not claiming i would have murdered anyone but uh i'm not not claiming i would have murdered somebody so you don't know you know, God, no. I'm, ex- I'm extremely stable. Nothing yeah. gets me. Very rarely do I get angry about anything. And if I do, I just call it the C word, throw something, and then I'm okay mm-hmm. again. Uh, Petito says, fans follow a team, supporters are emotionally invested in the team. Yeah, yeah but then you get into that. the whole you get into the whole name calling thing though, where where you gatekeep and start calling. I mean, I'm not not you, Petito. I'm just saying, like, when we start distinguishing those things, I get worried that like it's going to, you know, you're going to have people saying, I'm a supporter, you're a fan. Like it's some sort of, I mean, you see that a lot. You see that with proper fans who live in North London versus people who don't versus tourists versus Americans versus all this stuff. And, and, uh, and I hate that crap. I really, it really bugs me. Um, good question from seven King. Seven I'm coming out in a minute. I just want to go and say hello to, uh tom sabol that's oh, the name yes, tom. seen seen tom, before tom, oh no tom is uh uh he's in tampa florida uh going to be seeing him very very soon in orlando when uh, not, when the team is there 
lovely nice guy, see. huge supporter of Gunners versus Cancer. Had some uh, some personal tragedies recently, to which I cannot wait to get down there and just give him a big hug and a and a, and, and buy a drink and, and and finally hang out with him. But uh, but yeah, the part about intermittent fasting that I can't stand is the fasting. Is the gaps in between eating? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the intermittent fasting implies that there is eating, so that part I'm fine with. It's the part where I'm not eating that 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 I find most difficult. So. Thank you for the suggestion, though. I, I, uh, I'll, I'll give it a try. In fact, right now I am fasting. So, uh, I and mean, right now I'm not. See, that was intermittent, right? See, no, no, that, not eating. That is very, that is very good. Eating. Well done. Uh, nice to see Petito, long time listener to ABW, back in in the things. Uh, the Trainer King and what other names in here um tremaine i think i've seen tremaine a few times and the fellow miami dolphins fan who you know because i said who are they and you said you know who they are um well, i don't know I, I don't know him personally i know i know he's canadian hmm. and um uh, and and very talkative which is good because we like we like filling the chat up uh jove 82 who i follow on twitter jonas i'm sure jonas. that's jonas it is jonas from um Belgium? Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Belgium. Scandinavia. I thought it was Belgium. Fuck it, could be. There's a load, whole load of them. It's either it's, Belgium, uh, it's either Belgium or Denmark. Um, but I'm thinking it's Belgium. Hmm. And I think um, that we're probably about to find out. Mark has uh, said that thing. We're going to come back to that in a minute, Mark, because I like to moan out this thing. Um, seven King, eight Debs. We used to have someone called Seven Inch King, <laughs> and I always thought. Oh, is that the size of a record or something? And only yeah, in this right. last three seconds have I realized that <laughs> might not mean a seven inch single, it might mean something else. So, yeah, I, d I don't think it's a seven inch single. Let's well, it's a seven inch <laughs> single, but not but not a single yeah. record. Yes, all right. Can I can I try this? Yes, all right. Kabasiun, um, Turner, Zellalum, no, 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 Zellalum, um, yeah. That's okay, been a while. Here, here's where it gets a little tougher. Uh, everybody knows about Danny K. Everybody knows about Turner Zellum. Um, if we're going to include Balogun in this, or is that a trick question? Are we including Fuller and Balogun, born in New York City? Um, I don't know if that's part of the five. And, There's more um, than five. I don't know. I because can, I can't think of any other. Uh, How about one who currently plays for the USA? Yunus Munsa. I think I'm sure he plays for the USA. Who the hell is that? I'm sure when I was looking recently, um, hold on, I'm not sure how you spell it. Uh, I know it's Y U N U S, Y U N U S M U N. There you go, Mun Munsa, Yunus Munsa. Let's see if he has. I don't know him from either playing yeah, for the nineteen US games or or since 2020. He's played 19 games for the USA. <clears throat> Born in New York, joined Arsenal in 2012, left in 2019, currently playing very well for Valencia. And he's a Yank? He's an American. New York, New York City. Huh. Um, there was another one, um, Frankie Simek, who I think we got rid of. He left as a young man and went to play for Sheffield Wednesday. Um, yeah, Balogun. And then how about Ashton Trusty? Has he signed yet? Oh, Austin Trusty. That yeah, that's 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 one of them. Okay, so Trusty, Turner, Zellalem, Carbassian, and maybe the fifth one is the one that you've mentioned. Uh did we uh did, yes. did we get it? Seven King? Did did we get the five? I think we've got more. I think we've got seven. <laughs> one for, oh, we one for each enough. inch. One for each inch. Uh, one ball just saying about difference there, uh, but agree. If we talk about charity, there may be a huge practical difference between a fan and a supporter. That's very true because uh, a lot of people are a fan of Gunners versus Cancer, but not a lot of people are not enough people are a supporter. Lots are, but not enough. If everybody gave a pound on this planet, you'd have eight billion dollars, <laughs> no, you'd have ten billion dollars. Well, that's, that's uh, true. Why, why are you mixing uh, the different kinds of because uh... I make it up as I go along? I don't think. It just comes out. Uh, Mark says, uh, I do intermittent fasting, well, see, fast for 16, stop eating, 8 p.m., and eat lunch at 12 noon. I eat once a day. 
I've said this every week tonight. So 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 between twelve and eight, like how much do you eat? Like do you eat as much as you want, or you just eat like? I oh, doubt he eats as much as he wants because then you're not going to want to eat again at twelve, are you? Well, all right. So so he, so he eats so he eats lunch at twelve. Yeah. Stops eating after dinner at eight. Yeah, that's a long old lunch. <laughs> Even you'd struggle to do a late lunch like yeah. that. Well, and the, and the sixteen hours. Well, I, I don't mean that he that he starts and doesn't stop until eight. I'm just saying like he doesn't eat after eight. Those sixteen hours, I could fast in. I mean, I I routinely, I would go to bed hungry, which I can do, but like. I could stop eating at 8 p.m. until I go to sleep. Sleep. I usually wake up, you know, depending on when I have business, uh, I, you know, 9, 10 in the morning, which is very, very late. But I'm also usually up until 2 or 3 in the morning, uh, as you can attest. Um, it's just that I would eat a tremendous amount. But I'd probably eat three t- thrice between 12 and 8. And the calories, I mean, what I eat is obviously more important than when I eat. But maybe I'm just not understanding intermittent fasting so all right so he eats lunch he eats dinner nothing in between nothing outside of that and how many calories would you <laughs> he spends eight hours in the buffet how many calories do you say you're, you're eating during those eight hours mark in those 10 to twelve thousand, by the sounds of it <laughs> so i want to i want to <laughs> answer moss questions they're they're coming back, um yeah about about tickets you have to buy arsenal red memberships is only way mike for getting multi-tickets all you need to members is that true uk rules weird compared over here well i've gotten this question a handful of times uh both in in like dms as well as as this which is you know how do i get the tickets to the games i go to and i gotta be honest with you it's it's mostly you because, them. because I, yeah i mean i find them on i just i just walk around the emirates i look on the ground and yeah. just find them um, but no, I cover, your, cover yourself in corned beef and then pretend you're a hot dog and just wander in. <laughs> it's it's mostly because I've gotten to know some people who have season tickets. Um, you know, people who have donated to the charity, and when they're when they're not using their tickets, uh, I buy them from them. I, I I don't get given them. I buy them. Um, others are through our supporters group in Arsenal America. If, if Arsenal Canada works anything like Arsenal America, you do have to buy a membership for each ticket that you get. But, you know, it's worth it. It's $20, $25 for a membership. You get uh, a bunch of free stuff. I'm, I'm speaking specifically of Arsenal America now. And you get access to ticketing. The tickets generally are all in the same area, clock end upper. And and that's why as things have gone along with the uh, – he's at it again, Danny. Callum's at it again. Um, the uh, – the the tickets are generally all in the same area, and I I'd wanted to start experiencing other areas of the of the stadium. So uh, fortunately, I've gotten to know some people who can put tickets in place if we have enough notice. Um, as for just in general, how how to get them? I mean, you you either do need a membership or participating in the supporters club. If you don't go over there all the time and you don't really care where you sit, it's more important that you have tickets. My recommendation is to go through your supporters group. We often get questions at ABW. They send DMs and emails uh, saying, "How do we get tickets?" And the, the honest answer is, it is really unless you know someone like like Jack, who's kind enough to regularly give his away, and like we used to know Fifey, um, Jeff Arsenal is a good one. Um, go and follow Jeff Arsenal on Twitter, and then um, tell him that I sent you. I get a zero percent family discount. Um, he often has tickets, and if you're a gooner and you listen to the podcast, I mean, it'll always do you a good deal anyway. But sometimes the bigger games, they are very expensive. But Jeff Arsenal is always a really good one to get hold of. I know people give him a lot of grief because of, uh, because they don't like him because he's got a big account. And But yeah, he's a lovely, lovely bloke. And he will always sort you yes. out if you need tickets. He is. And, and, and the entirety of Twitter follows him. So, I mean, you're telling people to follow him on Twitter, mm-hmm. which is just there's silly. No one left, there, there's no one left. No. They'd have to invent a new Twitter just to get more followers for him. Um, Moss said, says, uh, Eunice Musa is an awesome young American in La Liga and Arsenal let let get away. Oh, I think someone he, that he was, Arsenal let get away. But if he was, was on one the of those books, ones. Go on. have we heard whether we got the five yet, including this guy or not? I want we to got know. seven. No, we, we didn't. Who were the seven? Right, write them down. I don't know. You to. must have a bit. Turner, Trusty, yep. Zeloam. Yeah, no, 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 no. 
Yeah. Musa. That's five. S Frankie Simek. Oh, I Balogun. Well, yeah, okay. So Bal Bal Balogun's, he, uh... a, ba Balogun's a maybe. Uh, I don't know that he's considered American because he plays, and I don't know that you can for this purpose as long as he's still playing for the uh, England. It's our U rules, Mike. It's the our England rules. U eighteen or nineteen. They wanted five. We gave them seven. That is a six hundred percent increase on in what they asked for. Um, uh, USA, awesome mid, and shouldn't it go? Uh, did Wenger have an American in the squad? Danny was... Carbastion was there at the time. Very good book. Well, Danny it was also Zell, um, no, 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 no. Danny Carbassian is somebody that within our first 10 episodes we were trying to get on our podcast. We thought it might be a nice way to kind of kick off the whole, you know, Arsenal podcast from an American perspective thing. And he, we actually were able to get him to, back then we were doing like Premier League game picks. Tom Cruise. We did have a guy named Tom Cruise, we but he, did. I don't Thomas, think he was American. <laughs> Thomas Cruise. We let him go to Yeovil. He gave up football, and he now works in insurance. He doesn't. He doesn't bartend. With, with... No, you have to give that up. Insurance, not a bad business. I didn't know Thomas Cruise was in was in insurance. Who's I read for? it recently. So I read it on his Wikipedia. It's probably bullshit. He's probably a murderer. Probably not a murderer. Actually, now I think about it, probably a lovely gentleman. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that we're live, <laughs> uh, which is more than you can say for his victims. Ah, oh, well, they will never tell. Um, yeah, just talking about the, how to get the ticket. As my, um, he says, uh, you have to buy Arsenal Red membership is the only way, Mike. For getting multi tickets, all need all need two members. That true. UK rules weird compared to over here. A. Eh? Yeah, I mean, I, over there, didn't they? My, my assumption is that, you know, I, and I think you're trying to get them for English friends as well as as, as yourself. But I mean, I, I don't think there's a restriction that an English person couldn't become a member of Arsenal Canada uh, for that purpose. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't have to tell you other than that. Um, what I don't want to end up being is, is a, uh, you know, is a ticket providing service for people as much as, you know, as, as, as much as I like to help people. Um, if I get, you know, 50 people asking me a day to get tickets to this particular game, then that's one more vice that I have that keeps me from getting thin and working out and spending time with my, my family. So, um, so hopefully that'll work. Most, um, Mark but, says he uh, spends eight hours at the buffet. That's that cleared up. Screen Boy had a terrible incident last night. He said, uh, I got the fright of my life last night. I was sitting in the bath and I felt a tap on my shoulder. He doesn't say who it was that was tapping him on the shoulder, but we'll have to find that out later. I do know he means the bath tap. I'm playing along. Mark says 2,000 to 2,500. I take I it he means calories. That. I could live on that. I went about three weeks having 900 calories a day. Made fuck all difference. And most of that was soup or tuna. Well, that was the diet that I was. I, I was doing under a thousand a day for for almost two months, and 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 in those two months, I lost about forty pounds. I mean, it it, it works, but at some point, you just you're like, I can't do this anymore, and it just and and for me, that is about a three at the three month mark. I just can't do it anymore. Um, so uh so yeah danny was a scout but he did he, he played uh with the first team a handful of times i think one of them was in a league cup game he's the only american to to ever score a goal for the arsenal on the first team i believe and i uh, think i might well have been there and um yeah so 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 that's his claim to fame zellum never scored in the uh for the arsenal first team in a in an actual competitive match he might have scored yeah. in a uh you know, yeah, you know, the preseason you know, tour abroad, wasn't it? Was it the Singapore or somewhere like that? So, yeah, something like that. And and did he pick anyone who played for the Arsenal? I think Zellum was someone he scouted. Zellum uh, grew up in my neck of the woods, uh, in in Virginia and Maryland, just outside of Washington D.C. And that's how I actually when I when I went to see the U twenty ones play when when they were the U twenty ones, they played at my, my first trip to Meadow Park, up in Borehamwood. Um, I went to go see him play, and in that game, I ended up seeing Matt Macy, Alex Awobi, Maitland Niles. They were all kind of part of that team, but uh, but Zellum just looked out of his depth. And when and at Meadow Park, they have to basically walk right by the the, the supporters in order to get to the dressing room. And and I I just called out 
you know, only Maryland, which is where I knew he was from. And, and he kind of looked up and came over and spent some time with me, which was nice of him. But, you know, I didn't have the heart to tell him that it just, you could tell in his eyes that he didn't feel like he belonged there. Did um, you um, do this, the Zelenem song to him? I, I did not do that. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't think I had right. been made aware of your podcast by that point, because this is back in 2014 or 15. Uh, before I entered the game, but Carbassian played three games for the Arsenal, Man all in the League Cup in 2004, Man City one, Arsenal two, Ars Arsenal three, Everton one. I think that's the one I was at, and Man United one, Arsenal it nil. It was the Everton one he scored, and I'm pretty sure. Mm. And Frankie Simic, uh, club stats played one game for Arsenal. Um, Arsenal 5, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1 in the League Cup in 2003. And I was probably at that as well. I mean, I can check, but no one cares today, so I won't bother. Now, i got a bone to pick with Mike Hurst because he just left Costco. Hold on, hold on. we got to do this. <laughs> Carry on. My wife also just left Costco. So is there something you would like to tell me? My wife was at Costco like an hour or two ago. So, Mmm, um... corned beef for everybody. Don't like this at all. He doesn't podcast Call me with me, and he goes and and stalks my wife. At a well, and these kids are yours, so maybe Mike's returning. He already, thinks, he already thinks he has a connection with her because they both like jazz, and I don't. Jazz is shit. Because um, Mike, Mike's see this. Is, is, this is my guy right here, Mikey. This is my oh, boy. Look oh look, there's someone from ABW's turned up. Jesus Christ! We'll have to break out the. Uh, Oh, he's running right now. He's he's watching whilst on his run. In, I wouldn't, uh, in, I wouldn't in, be surprised. Devon. I couldn't do any running with my swinging stuff. It, I'd do myself an injury. Um, <laughs> flapping around. I feel like one of them goats. They got bigger. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, Michael in Sweden says, I buy my tickets from Arsenal Sweden. Did you really read that? Yep. Well, I didn't oh, read it. Okay. No, not, not on oh. the pod. I read it. In the in the chat, <laughs> screen boy says bye, Callum. <laughs> He'll be back in a while. Um, yeah, Carbassian's Car Car um, book is very good. I've got it over here somewhere. Um, uh, Michael Norris, uh, hi guys, I'm Callum's father. What's he done now? He's a bad boy, Michael Norris. Uh, just hope that Callum's uncle doesn't turn up as well, and his brother, and his uncle, and his mum, and his gat, and his goat, and his chickens. Uh, they're all gonna turn up one after gerbil. the other. Uh, yes, you are. Like I was going to say, Mister Hertz has to get um, has to find himself another wife because his wife cannot physically shell out any more babies. He's, she's gone dry. She's had to uh, she's had to fertilize somebody else. <laughs> Literally dry. Uh, Mossed said, "What's his Mossed's name? Did you know? I don't. Canadian Gooner because that Mossed." I said sports talk. What explain what that is? Because uh, we do like sports and we do like to talk. Um uh, says need to get over, do the bucket list of the Emirates and Leicester and Palace. Leicester's a lovely ground. Palace is a great great for um that their fans are just great. Yeah, I I have I've, I've been to oh, both. You went there. I've been to Palace five times, three three with the Arsenal and twice as a neutral. No, six times, three as a neutral, three with the Arsenal. As a I'll neutral, it's it's a great place to go. I have not had the best of luck going there to support Arsenal as an away fan, though. Um, two crippling I've only been to losses. Old ground. Shit two old. crippling losses and a draw that felt like a loss. Um, so uh, so yeah, the, that that hasn't worked out well. But but when I've been there just to enjoy a football game, it's it's a magnificent place to go. Leicester, I went to twice just this season. Um, once as an away supporter, once as a neutral for a uh, conference league game against PSV where I spent the whole game watching Cody Gapko. Um, Gapko. But uh that's a really it's just that's the kind of environment that I think of football. The Emirates environment is a little disappointing compared to I mean it it's just very sterile. It's very kind of big money. It's very I mean it's it's amazing. And if you're an Arsenal supporter, it's a fantastic place to go because it's where your team plays. But to me, the old kind of stadiums, the Selhurst Park, the West Ham, 
Used to be a good one. Used to be. Uh, not, not anymore. anymore. It's, even, it's even worse it's now like, than the Emirates. Yeah. It's like going back and watch. It's like in the upper tier at WrestleMania 2. It's a fucking nightmare. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, except you feel like that when you're in the lower tier. When you're in the upper tier, it's like watching it from from space. But um, um, but yeah, the, the Craven Cottage is nice. It's really, really nice. Um, one of my favorites is Loftus Road. In oh, I've been there a few QPR times because well, my that. big Dave used to live as a QPR fan. I've been there probably three or four times. Quite nice. Always felt felt like a Sputio Stadium because it's so good, there's no gaps. Topic. This is a huh? good topic for the for the chat to get involved in. You know, kind of your favorite. Uh, someone said the Valley. That's um, that's Charlton, right? Yeah, went there with uh, with one of the biggest addicts I know, Tom Canton. Um, hey. That's addicts with a D, by the way. Um, but uh, but yeah, his well, his his missus is an addict. <laughs> I'm spreading all kinds of rumors now. She is a Charlton Athletic supporter and Certainly a fan. Is. Um, yes. And and so I went there last November. It's a it's a nice stadium. I mean, they're all really kind of charming in their own way. Vicarage Road is been there. really kind of cool. It's it's super small. It's hard to believe it's a it's a Premier League stadium, but in um, in between all the houses with very bad parking, it feels moderner than a lot of those stadiums do. I mean, like it doesn't feel like it's about to fall apart, which for me is kind of a charming thing. Uh, I like feeling like you know after I leave, it might just fall apart. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't been to Leighton Orient, Melvin. Uh, that's been on my on my bucket list. Gander Green Lane is uh it's not super cool but uh but the but the bar they have there which you used to be able to like the since they made the football league they closed off where the player like the, when the player you can't leave through the player tunnel anymore you used to be able to leave the bar they would close it briefly while the players walk through but otherwise you could you could use the same toilet that they use walk through the the player entrance out out onto the pitch and you can't do that anymore but uh Used to be like that at Barney. I was uh, at a game and at half time, I went into the executive bar, <laughs> executive, and I went in there because that's where the disabled toilet was. And I come out the toilet, Brian Marwood was sat there covered in mud having a drink. I said, Brian, you're not playing very well. He went, I know. That was it. Well, that was nice of you. Well, you know. Um, Moss said his name is Chris and he's got his own YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, you can put your link to your YouTube yeah, so, channel so, if you want. So, so you can now officially stop saying Mossed. It's Mossed. Mossed, yeah. Mossed. Yeah. It sounds like some kind of uh, um, uh, people with guns. I can't remember how you say that properly. Yes. Um, so, uh, Seven King says, uh, do you see the highlights from yesterday's game? Which youngsters are you most excited about? And we will get some game time this year. Play dip switch. I'm not going to answer possible. your question until you answer mine, which is, did we get the goddamn trivia question right or not? Um, <laughs> We've right. just been through them and said there were seven. I know, Six but, and a I, half we got. but when a person asks a, a trivia question, I would like to get confirmation as to How whether about? we successfully answered it or not. And if you don't let us know, I'm going to fight you. <laughs> You're going to be number two, man. <laughs> How about um, list all 20, or oh, we've had 19 Brazilians at the club. That have been players uh, soon to be twenty. When um, this is your chance to put out that little thing. I've had mates. nineteen Brazilians at, at at my local salon. Poor women, and each one went blind and mad <laughs> and was never seen again. Um, are you excited? Well, Eddie, Eddie looks good. Now because they not, there's nothing intermittent about the fasting that they're doing at this point. Did Eddie you see looks the good. Poaching from from close close up, getting rebounds and po putting five in. tap ins, pretty much. I mean. Yeah, I'm not. That's all you I'm need. Not, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think, I'm just. How bad was Ipswich yesterday? <laughs> I mean, oh, they're not a good side. Have, didn't Laconga play on the left hand side? I, I I don't know a tremendous amount. All I saw was that one and a half minute video that showed all Which the was goals. Dog shit quality. Thomas Partey's pass. I mean, that at any league of uh, at any level of football, that's pretty tasty. My, I mean, if he could if he could put together an entire season this season, that's going to be the maybe the biggest determinant of how of how we finish the season is, is Thomas Partey. If he's not healthy, we're screwed. There's no party. Is. No party, no party. Exactly. Um, exactly. Apparently enough people made a play on words for his name. That doesn't happen enough. 
Um, oh, Melvin says, uh, my son is over in San Francisco when the Palace game is on. Oh. He's watching it with the U.S. Arsenal Supporters Club. Well, the one in San Francisco is called the Bay Area Gooners. A guy named Mark Barbeau runs it. Um, Any great, relation? Great, great guy. To Rocky? Uh, <laughs> Rocky Barbeau? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure yeah, that's how it works. It's his son. Um, Ooh, my, my, I have, I have great affinity for this place because it is where I finally broke my trophy duck uh, oh. back in 2014, um, for the FA cup against Hull. That's where I watched the game. We were traveling on a business slash like a reward type trip for, uh, for the people that I worked through and at the time. And, uh, and we were headed to Napa Valley that afternoon, but before the, before we, jumped on the bus to to take us up there we were able to watch that game and obviously the memories of that game are very very positive and they were in good uh you know good place so melvin tell your son uh, i mean there's no need to say anything but uh tell him to to seek out mark he's a good guy and you will be well war- he'll he will be well warmly welcomed don't tell him you're jewish though because no i'm just kidding you, you can tell him uh, Loki's put Leeds, Villa, and Everton. Oh, grounds, probably. I've always wanted to go to Leeds. I've been to both Goodison and Villa Park. Villa I've Park. Been to Villa for semi finals. I wasn't too impressed with Villa Park. Too windy. We were also sat really, really high. That's one of those where yeah, the, it was. That's where I was. It, I've been one it, of the corners. It was, a, yeah, it was, it was, an, it was Arsenal away. Right after that Olympiacos game where we had to score three goals, and we did, and Giroud got the hat trick, the next game in the league was an away game against Villa, which we won, and Villa were, like, headed down at that point. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're, it's the whole corner in the lower and upper, and we, and we got sat almost towards the top of the upper. And, uh, and so maybe that had something to do with it. It was also kind of a pain in the ass because you take the train to Birmingham, and then you got to get on another train, like a local train, to go to Aston, the the stop is actually Aston, and that train was just packed AF. It was so uncomfortable, and so I wasn't a huge fan of Villa. I loved Goodison Park, absolutely loved Look, it. We have a content thief. <laughs> <laughs> Their show's over now, huh? Content thief. Welcome to the Sunday roast. We invented two people talking on the internet. We're the first people to mm-hmm. ever do it. We did. There's, there's, and you no... lot were the second. It's never happened before, and it'll probably never happen again. Two check, grown men check, check, talking. Check your YouTube because your monetization has been forwarded to to. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the fifty p we used to make. Oh, no geez, one else all... is allowed to have. You you can have three. You can have one. You can you can have two people as long as they don't talk to each other. But you can't have two people just talking to each other about random shit. We came up with that. Did. And, and and we uh, om- as we were discussing earlier, we almost came up with it thirty five years ago. Um, if people, it's just Ryan from the the Mister Arsenal podcast. Go find it on YouTube. Uh, so him and Andrew are also our friend um, from the from Andrew Highbury, the no, from Dial Square to where, and they just have a chit chat and they take questions. And uh, Ryan is going to be very busy in the upcoming week. I saw someone have the absolute cheek of saying we're the only people doing the Women's World Cup. Is it the World Cup they're having, or is it the Euros? I should think it's Euros. the World Cup. Oh, the Euros. And someone tweeted, we're the only Arsenal channel doing Euros. I thought, fucking Ryan will be doing it, and Rich will be doing it, and quite a few other people will be doing it as well, cheeky fuckers. I didn't bother telling them because I couldn't be bothered. But, yeah, if, you, if you're interested in the women's football, go and watch Ryan. Is um the Mr. Arsenal podcast on YouTube. Yeah, or, 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 all or the games. go watch Rich so that he doesn't start bitching about the fact that nobody watches him. But <laughs> when he's not being, he didn't actually he didn't Sorry. he didn't get banned. He just deleted his um, account for a few hours. I, 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 just, I meant to just it. think that, but but it might have slipped out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's big enough and ugly enough to be able to take that on the chin. Uh, Forest away back in the olden days. Yeah, of. Another ground, the number of grounds I've been to, we went to Scotland with me and Mark and his brother, um, what was it, Mark Garnham and Dave Garnham. We just went, let's drive to Scotland. So we drove to Aberdeen and and Celtic and Rangers and Hibs. Uh, Aberdeen's not windy enough. And then we did a few of them. On the way back, we went to Man City, went to Man United, Newcastle, and uh, went to, I've dropped Dave off at the Forest ground before. 
So uh, I've been to loads of grounds, but I've actually been inside. Yeah, I, I, I love, I mean, I'm trying to get to as many as I can. When I, People are always asking me, like, like, why are you going to that game? Like, why do you go to the Spurs game uh, that I went to in them. November? Uh, I went there to troll them. Why, you know, why are you doing all Because if I'm over for 20, for 20 days, Arsenal's only going to play three or four times in that time frame. What am I supposed to do the other 15, 16 days? Go to the fucking Tower of London? I've done that a million times already. So, you know, so it's 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 about football. And I want to see – I like to see as many different places as I can, but the problem is that it can be difficult to get tickets – for uh, for specifically for Premier League games, if you're not a member, like I couldn't get tickets to Brentford uh, because they're on a membership scheme and they're you know everyone's loving them right now because they're finally in the Premier League. It's very very difficult to get a ticket there. West Ham a little bit easier, Watford a little bit easier, and I have pr- uh, purchase history. Same with Palace. I became a member of Man City, Real Madrid, <laughs> Atletico Madrid. Leicester City. I'm I'm a I'm a Leicester City. Um, what are they called? The hell is their? Fox. Uh, yeah, I'm a I, I'm a fox, and Jake was a junior fox this year because we wanted to get uh, like good tickets for for the PSV, and I got all these like membership cards that I'm never going to use. Here, I'm a I'm a Madridista. Here's my membership. <laughs> um, you know, I am a fox, but now I'm a double fox. But uh, but yeah, so uh, Leeds is the one that I really wanted to do, and I was gutted when we drew Leeds in the League Cup. But it was home. I would have much rather that been an away game. Um, Chris is showing off with the Brazilians. There is actually, if you go to uh, if you go to abercampwonderland.co.uk, there is actually a list of all the Brazilians there, and a list of all Arsenal players' birthdays and lots of other meaningless lists. So Chris has got most of them there. William, allegedly. I like that. See, someone tweeted the other day that William had fallen out of Corinthians and he was coming back to Arsenal just for yeah, one that, season. Yeah, that was... <laughs> people <laughs> took that seriously. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> Falling uh, out of Corinthians. Uh, Ryan says, uh, was, content was, um, beef my ass. Ha <laughs> ha. Was Danielson on that list? I, I didn't read the whole thing. <laughs> uh, yes, he was on there. Um, we've got um, DJ Gatti. He says, uh, hi, guys. I'm watching you from Poland. Also, love your show. Steve uh, Lord Hillwood, who's do, who invented this ABW before he sadly succumbed to cancer a few years ago. He lived in, with the, he's an Englishman, lived in Warsaw since 2000. And from his flat, he could see the, the, the fire station. And regularly doing podcasts, you hear, or whatever noise they made. And he went, Fucking Polish having indoor barbecues again. Never found out whether that was taking the piss out of Balotelli. No, that was fireworks, wasn't it? To yeah. the way. Well, thank you for um, watching from Poland. We have we have Poland. We've got Malawi. We've got Scotland. We've got the U.S. We've got England. Um, we've got uh, we've we've got Plymouth. <laughs> Might you Plymouth. all these different countries? <laughs> um, DJ Gatti wants to know anything happening with Tielemans. I, I keep think, thinking all these ones we're linked to, they're doing that old, look, look at this hand. Look, Tielemans, Tielemans, meanwhile, with their other hand, they're bringing in someone like Gatko or someone like that, someone we're not expecting, which is why they, they, they keep doing that, don't they? I mean, no one knew the young Brazilian that we were going to sign, and no one had ever heard of Fabio Vieira. No, I mean, that that you like to see that because, I mean, you know, and, and Arsenal have earned my trust when it comes to signing players who we haven't necessarily heard. Like, like I don't need to have heard of them in order to like the signing but it's nervy until you figure out whether it's a complete bust or not like I mean tell me uh, to, I don't need to be the guy who was the first person to 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 grill Arsenal for signing Tomiyasu and for signing Fabio Vieira just because they'd never been heard of before like they could turn out to be very good and you know but uh but you don't want it to be only those guys. That you certainly don't. Um, no, there's, uh, no one's got anything else in there. We did star a few things. Um, I don't uh, but, by the way, word. to an- answer the Telemans, I think we're going to end up with Telemans. I just think it'll be one of these things that that probably happens in August. Is he with- going to drive to the stadium and just stay in parts in his car out the front until we sign him? <laughs> Do you remember who it was that did that? <laughs> Oh, it was a West Brom player. Um, actually, I read about it the other day. I was just looking through old transfers. I think he's recently moved to a shit club. Peter um, Oda. Oda, Oda. Oh, I said Oda. 
I was about to say Peter Odenwingi. That was um, so we'd... funny. That 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 and the dildos are probably the two best transfer deadline day things of all time. <laughs> the um, guys, the, there was a guy standing right. It was outside the Emirates, right? I think it may well have been. And the guy like jams a dildo into the Sky Sports reporter's ear and was uh, all right. Nowadays, Callum, that would count as sexual assault. Callum, I would like to wish your brother Brandon a very very happy birthday. Um, no such person. Brandon Barton, if you exist. We are very proud of you for uh, for surviving another year. Well done. Um, oh, here's one. Mark uh, says about America. We were talking about Americanisms. He says people in McDonald's say, "Can I get a Big Mac and fries?" Now, Sean does this. We go somewhere, and she goes, um, "Can I have a? Can I get this?" And I say, "No, Sean, stop." And I say to the person, "Stop." She says, "Can she get?" So unless you're going to say to my daughter, "Yes, come through and get it yourself," it's, "Can I have? Can I have?" No, Big Mac and fries. yes, yes, but it's you're not, not even right. But but you're not even right because it's not. Can I have? No, it's not. May I have either? It's... They're being fucking paid. They do as they're told. Well, you say, "Oi, Hernandez, get me a Big Mac, you shit." <laughs> now, why would you have picked him out of all of the he's... people? Because the... he looks like someone who works in McDonald's. Someone who's permanently disgruntled. Probably got a gun. <laughs> and probably goes out and back and kills rats with his gun during <laughs> half time. I love. I, I could not love more how, how, like, literally the nicest person in, on the internet. No, he's not. It's a lot. It's a sham. Is is uh, has gotten a reputation now of being racist, mean, angry, and and uh, whatever else you want to do. I mean, this is great. We're he's gonna. A, oh, he's an evil man. You see that? That he's had his hair cut. He's wearing glasses. It's all a facade. He's probably an international killer. He's probably got deadly hands. That's why no one really it. knows where he's from, is because no. he's wiped away his past completely. Yeah, he's, he's, he's never like, you never see anything in the background, do you? Plain walls. He's doing bucking bird. That's what he's doing. He's doing a long stretch for for murder. It's never see the kids bullshit. He has to just have sounds playing on a tape deck. He's doing time for crimes he can't even talk about. Anyway, oh, I mean they're 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 vicious. They're ridiculous. And and the funny thing is he's laughing his ass off right now at this because. Um, because we finally figured them out. I can't yeah, believe right. I, I can't believe we we didn't do we didn't do the full due diligence before bringing him on to the Gooners Pod. That you I mean because oh, you're just at, desperate at the Gooners you're Pod. Just... You expect a certain level of, of integrity, um, and you know, and and law abidingness, and and we can't be doing, we can't be having those kinds of people on the show. Fortunately, it takes care of itself <clears throat> because he doesn't do it anyway. Um, things I made a note on. If people follow me on Twitter. That I had um, Gav from She Wall and Sophie from the Hybrid School both sent me a message saying, "Has your account been hacked?" I, every every six months, I delete all my tweets because I come out with some right old shit to annoy people, and uh, it actually annoys some people. And so I delete it every six months because you never know what was acceptable in January is probably now a hate crime in in July. So uh, I started it July a couple of years ago. I just deleted ninety seven thousand tweets. And then Christmas, then July, then Christmas. And it doesn't always do it. And then sometimes it will leave a load of retweets there. And then I have to go and I found out the way to get rid of them is to retweet it and unretweet. And then it fucks off because they haven't been able to get rid of it. But it was too many of them and people thought I'd been hacked. And so I've had to just download my um, Twitter archive, which I just got a notification from Twitter. And then I put it in this app and it would delete everything for me. And probably for the best day. Eh? It's 12 quid for a lifetime of deleting Oh, it might I, just be cheaper not to tweet shit in the first place, but I didn't think about that at the time. The, I, I've used a mass tweet deleter once in my lifetime, and it was the best idea ever. Cathartic. Uh, well, no, well, it, no, it's because I needed to take a particular rodent-based Twitter account and immediately turn it into a charitable. Uh, uh, endeavor with lots yeah. of followers recently uh recently obtained followers back in 2019 maybe and um and it worked like a charm but uh but no i haven't done that, anything like that since so um quick question did you and, and it's fine if you didn't i just want to I, I just want to know whether there's a reason for me to ask this or not did you happen to catch the end of our friday night show the one where we gave away the shirt. No, I did not. Okay. I listened. You had, um, was it Ruth you had on? Yeah, we had uh, yeah. Sophie and Ruth, Ruth and Sophie. 
Yeah. And I was listening to that, and I think I, something. I, I think at ten o'clock, it was was it Friday night you were doing it? Yeah, Saturday night. Yeah, ten o'clock. Nick Abbott, LBC. So I turned you off to put him on, so I can watch you back. Like I watched your um, your finances one back the other night. I was in bed. No, I wasn't. I was in here and I watched it. Very good. So um, I don't really need to watch it now because I know I know how it ends. So then the, the the question I have for you is, who scored the last goal ever at Highbury? Oh. Um, that would have been the 4-2 win over Wigan. I was there. Oh, it's not then, is it? Oh, it's going to be, um, was it, was it like a journalist's V, um, uh, gardeners or something? Was it you? No, <laughs> I don't know. I do vaguely remember someone has tweeted about it before and, um, it was, uh, not a professional footballer. No, it was Alan Alger. Um, who's like oh, a PR guy? We follow each other on Twitter, of course. I should have fucking known. Yeah, and, and, and Ryan, Ryan is very bitter because we did a. Um, I, I mean, it's funny actually, but the um, and I love you, Ryan. But the um, the trivia question we gave away like an extra piece of Ruth Beck art to a tri- you know to the trivia answer, and we asked that question, which I thought a people would know, b people would Google, although I asked them not to, and the. Um, like 12, 15, 20 answers go by, and it's all the, you know, Thierry Henry. And then when it's not Thierry Henry, um, people start going for the other guys. And, and, um, and, and finally, I mean, it, Ryan is like giving me dossiers on why it was Thierry Henry <laughs> and, and so on. And it just, it, you know, that's because you're a shit. I didn't say what. Like in a competitive game, I didn't say for Arsenal. I didn't say any of that. I, I I said who scored the last goal at Highbury, period, and that was the last recorded goal that ever happened at Highbury, and it was three weeks after the Arsenal Everton game. This is why Ryan doesn't invite you on his Arsenal <laughs> quizzes because you cheat. We need to get that sorted, Ryan. We need a quiz. It's summer. People have needs. Um, oh, we'll we'll definitely do one um, for the twenty four hour for our twenty four hour podcast. Yes, um, Are you can do a quiz. I would like to. I'll have to talk to, to, to Quizmaster Mikey about it, but, uh, you know, we'll have the usual suspects on. I think we, we did that last year on our on our show. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of the, – that show is in the works. We've got a lot of positive RSVPs, some of the same folks that were on it last year. I think I just replied, might we get lost, didn't I? No, because I just know that you'll do it. Um, but, uh, no, I asked you. I asked you. I know, and I replied. I it said, shall be. What am I going to get paid? It shall be on paid? on the first of August, starting in the evening on the first of August, ending in the evening on the second of August. Everything that we're doing is on the first of the month right now. Our our eighty nine shirt prize draw was on first of July. Our twenty four hour podcast is on the first of August. We are efforting towards doing a live show type of event in London on the first of September. Uh, if you can please try to find someone that could drive you down, Danny, we would love for you to be I've there. Eaten, but I've eaten half a pint of cherries. <laughs> Thanks for saying. Uh, the problem public. with my balls, it's been two weeks and two fucking days, and they're still the same size. They're not that fucking big. That I mean, I'm going to go see the, I'm going to go see the doctor. The, if, the if we're going to publicize then. that, like one of the big attractions at the show is that everyone gets to see Danny Sweetman's balls. You get to rub him, and for good luck, everyone will have a good season. I need to know that I'm going to be able to deliver on that promise. So, uh, well, me so and that, Sean are talking again at the moment, well, which good. is nice. That is helpful. Yeah, so, and she so likes to come down and meet everybody. That's the first of September, and then. On the 1st of October, unless they change the date of the game, in which case it would be the 2nd of October, uh, we are going to have a local event here, the the uh, the Day of Giving, which we do at the pubs here in uh, in America, where everybody does their own fundraiser that day, and it happens to be the day, uh, just like last season, uh, season was, of the first North London Derby. So uh, everything is the first of the month. Also, because we're on the topic, uh, FIFA Gamers... We have the third annual Gooners versus Cancer FIFA tournament. Has Chris entered or Jeff, Canadian Jeff? No, no. So Sickening. It, now, look, my, 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 um, Stefan Selby played last year. 
uh, and I hope we'll be back. He is a lovely, lovely man. He uh, he ended up losing to Jake, so I'm, he was a little bitter over that. But uh, but yeah, he uh, well he he nothing. We we are doing that again, third annual, and and because I've been focused on everything else, been pretty slow in getting uh, getting enrollees into the tournament. So if you can help by talking about it, there are what two. Now? There are two uh, web addresses that you could go to, depending on what platform you have to register. The first, of course, is gvcplaystation.com. If you own a PlayStation, the other is gvcxbox.com. It costs either $25 or $40 to enter. The, That's uh, why Chris hasn't entered. The $40 entry is uh, it comes with more free raffle tickets for the for the Juno raffle later in the summer. Um but uh, either way, you get into the tournament. You get to play at least six games. It's, I run the the brackets. It's a Champions League format. It's fun. You get to see meet people. You get to play. You get to help kick cancer. It's fun. So uh, so make sure to uh, to join us. Go to either of those. You sign oh, up. Sorry. You get in the tournament, and then you go and donate at the uh, GoonersVCancer.com website. So that is what's going on with Gooners versus Cancer. What else busy, did you busy. do this week, Danny? I um, had a bath, which is nice because um, my That's shoulder cool. is fucked. So I had to get my mum to do my armpits and my head because I can't reach my head at the moment. Um, got my appointment for my miracle cure. Yeah, they've moved it from the 20th of September to the 27th. My brother, hold on, <laughs> got a bit of grape stuck. You don't do that any, on any other podcast. I'll tell no. you. Uh, my brother had his Ryan, phone call with doing them. that on his podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my brother had his phone call with them, and they um, just, just said, you've got to come for a blood test. And then that was it. So where I was, I was thinking, they were saying, when you ring us, we'll, um, we'll speak to you and go through it all, and then we shall ship you out. Apparently my one, because I'm not as fucked. I'm not fucked at all. But everyone else who's fucked has the liquid. But if I have it, it's an injection in the fucking spine, Michael. And I forgot I, I forgot whether I asked you this or not, which is crazy because it's very this is a very important thing for you. Is well, the goal to is the goal to regain your ability to walk? I don't know. Possibly. That's what some of them will possibly think. I have no expectations. My shoulder, I just like my shoulder to be fine again. And that, that's it. <laughs> epi fucking dural, Jesus Christ! I need an epidural before I have an injection in my spine. <laughs> um, my brother, my brother, you know my brother's name, didn't you? I don't remember. Same as uh, yours. Oh, oh, it's uh, it's Paul White. It's <laughs> Seeing that picture on the left, uh, that some of the people there, I think two of them, tweeted me and said I used to sit behind you at the football. <laughs> well, and I never heard. I never heard they, from them again. They would, have, they, they would have the complimentary picture that is just of the back of your head. <laughs> I didn't take that many photos. I've kind of all the game, nearly just over 400 games. I've not got that many photos. Um, yeah, so the, the aim for it, I think the, the main aim is for babies who get it usually die because your muscle, your heart is a muscle and, you, and all those other bits will stop working and you'll die as a baby. And then type two my brother's got fucks you up when you're about three or four. But you survive, and eventually, by the age of 40, 50, 60, you die because your muscles stop working. And then my one, when you're a teenager, and then that just slows you down, and eventually you end up sitting down. So I'm not going to die of it. So hopefully, because I've not had, like my brother's had, with this, one of the things you get, you get um, a bendy spine. And so you end up bent over like that. I don't have that either. In fact, they thought I did. I went to, I went to um, Cambridge to have an x-ray on my back, probably... 30 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, and they come back, oh, you've got, you got a bad spine. I said, why? They said, oh, well, the photo, I didn't know what they were um, x-raying before. They went, well, in the, the, the x-ray you've got, you can see your spine leans to one way. I said, you do know they got me to sit on a wooden fucking stool and the legs weren't even, don't you? Without swearing at them. And they went, oh, was it? So I had to have another one and I was fine. Because of a, a wanky, shitty stool. That's the NHS for you. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, like he's had, but they put a rod from the, from your bum crack to the back of your neck, about an inch thick, and then they fuse all your spine all the way down to your rib cage. My brother's had that done, and so's the uh, the girl that we know. She's had it done, and then because then your feet, um, your Achilles get really really tight, so they've cut his Achilles, 
and they do all these they've all kinds of things and i've had nothing done they come they poke me with a stick once and they put me on a wobbly wooden chair and that's it so hopefully it will even if it regresses me back to how it was 10 years ago when i could drive that'd be good yeah but i just want to be able to move a bit more yeah. but that's my arthritis mainly well let's, fuck uh... all they can do about that Let's let's get that done. We 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 need uh, we need our 2012 Danny back. No, I'll go, I'll go 2002. 2002, much, right? much, much better version. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, 1996 would be a quality version because uh, I wasn't fat at all. But I'm not. Uh, if, it, if, it, if something happens, it, it does. If it doesn't, never mind. I have no expectations. When when was this picture? 2005. 2006. Right. Um, that hybrid, though, well, right? I so, sent you the whole picture, didn't I? And I think in the background you can see the scoreboard. Oh, I don't take know. it you haven't got it, have you? Not, not handy. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I love. I mean, it, it, Paul you look exactly the same. <laughs> Some people have asked me, "Am I the big show?" And Some I say, people have asked me, Are, am, "Am I? Uh, am I Dan? Tatanka? <laughs> Tatanka?" <laughs> Um, where would it be? Would it be under football? Oh, here we go. I'll, put, I'll have a look under football and see if it's in football. Um, oh, it's the 16th of May 2004, I think. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was the 3rd of May 1998, Arsenal 4, Everton 0. Oh, no, it oh, wasn't. Oh. No, I'm wearing the same top twice. It was. It was 16th of May 2004. I've got... No, it wasn't. That's a different top as well. <laughs> you know what? I've got no fucking idea when it was. Well, that okay. the the sixteenth of May two thousand four was two one Le against Leicester City, um, but uh, I don't know. Yes. To me, to me, that looks like you know shortly before the closing down of of Highbury. So, any other um, comments or questions of, of, before we wrap up? Because it is uh, getting on in 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 the evening over there. Have um, you seen my my FA Cup final one? No. I've now got two screens. It keeps putting them on the wrong one. It's got a couple of pictures I shall I shall drag up. We go here and then we go down to here. Let's have little people let's have that one on for a little while to keep people keep them moist. <laughs> I mean you just I've never seen a guy that looks more Jewish than, than you in that <laughs> picture. I, I mean, told you, you I'm you, you literally look like a huh? fiddler on the roof. Well my lot are all German, aren't they? Oh German German Irish, that's a combination for you. So um, this is me from the 1998 FA Cup final. Look how skinny. I'm still in that chair now, and I still wear my Care Max Classics. Look how skinny it was then. Yeah. And Sean, John, Sean's mum had only been stuffing me full of food um, for uh, two years at that point. This was uh, about a week after the doing the double and the first game at Highbury. We did the first, when we won the league. So I went to this uh, FA Cup final against Newcastle 2-0 with a uh, Tony. West Ham fan from school. So was this um, after? Was this on the the day of the game? Like yeah, after because I never leave games early because it's just pointless. Um, Is that Wembley? Yeah, the old Wembley, obviously, but uh... yeah, well, well perceived. Um, and there you go. There's me, a little bit more plumper. This is a few years later. It was a sunny look, goatee. It was a nice hot sunny day. And uh, I don't know who took the photo of me. Oh, it says it there, fifteenth of May, two thousand and four. So I'm not quite sure who took that photo. But Where is that? That's the the corner behind me is the east end. That's oh, okay. The, so if I look left, I see I see the clock end. Gotcha. Okay. There you go. So I've got uh, FA Cup final. I've got one of, of Barnet. Got Sean at the foot. Of that one. I don't know when that one was. Um, I think I've only got. Ah, oh, I'll show you this one. This is the. Um, where is it? This one, I do look like I, I'm. It's done it again. Stop fucking putting it on the second monitor, you absolute shit. Um, now this one, it looks like I've got boobs, but I wasn't fat at the time. Just I'm leaning back, me and the bubba. Oh. And Jessica Linen, Bergson, Ivan Campo playing for Bolton. Fuck me. Uh, Pedersen. This look, Manson. by the way, is me trying to read the, the, the scoreboard behind you. How did Bolton get Ivan Campo and Yuri Djurkaev playing for them? Djurkaev's the strange one. Well, Ivan Campo is as well. So there's my lovely little bubba. This was 2002. So you can see a little bit of chub coming on. 
but not too much chub. And I'm wearing the same top there in 2002 as I'm wearing in, in 98. It's just a little bit more worn out. <laughs> and an NFL top on there, I think that is uh, – who's that? What team is that? That looks like the Carolina Panthers. That's it. I don't Which know what shirt numbers. A Dolphins fan, but – Yeah, I don't care about that. Uh, the Dolphin blue wasn't really my colour, so I couldn't wear it. And then we've got the most famous uh, Arsenal picture of all time. Which is uh, you don't put this on the second monitor, you shit. Uh, so the final one I'm going to share with you, the one I have on my um, it's fucking done it on the other one, hasn't it? All files. Here we go. It must be a PNG. You're at, you're shitting me. All right? No. What? Ping. I'm gonna have to edit this and then save it as a pung. There well, we go. I, this is the one I think you were getting at anyway. The, the most famous Arsenal picture. That is actually the one I was looking for. So a couple good. of boys just chilling, invited in a couple of our friends. So it's just it's just the kind of podcast that we produce here for you people. There's there's Mike and the uh, and Thierry Henry. Oh, this fucking thing! God, how does it take so long to upload anything? And then there is me and Thierry Henry. Oh, look at that. <laughs> So, you see, right above my bald head, there's that bloke with a blue shirt. He's the one who tweeted me and said, I sat behind you for years. <laughs> um, and there's Paul and his mum, Karen. And there's Monkey Boy, Mon uh, Matt, who came to most of the games with me over the years. Sean's godfather. Now, windscreen, was a windscreen fit, and now works for Aston Martin. Doing all their stuff. Highbury. Great. Yeah, those were the days, man. Just after this photo was taken, Henri came over and asked for an autograph. I told him, I said, get back on the pitch, boy. Go and get the game done. Score a goal, hat trick, and I'll consider it. Same same thing here. I, I, I said, you know, you, if you stop hanging out with this loser yeah. uh, next to you, then, then I'll, Leon sign player. I'll sign your autograph. But uh, And he didn't. Didn't happen. Yeah. Sad times. Anyone put anything else of any relevance in the uh... – no, not really. <laughs> shot by Mike. I wish I, 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 I would. I, I don't know why I said I wish it was Photoshop. No, I'm glad that it wasn't Photoshop. That was that was a good way to 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 kind of mitigate the anger about losing to. I think that was the day we lost to uh, Brighton. You saw us lose so many times when you were over recently. It's hard to tell which was which. That was the first and only time I have ever seen Arsenal lose at the Emirates. Thank and you. if we if you wouldn't have been there, we would have got Champions League football. That's what true. do you got to say about that? How about how do you like them apples? Yeah. Well, end of their careers. I think this is going to be the end of our career if our career was just this show. Uh Danny, I'm I'm about out of energy. Um It's only five o'clock in the afternoon there, you shit bag. I know, but look, I'm still recovering from Friday night. <laughs> so, uh, and and I've got a, I, I'm working on another financial slash research type show uh What's, how's it going to be different from the last one you did it's going to focus more on the myths and truths of of the ownership of stan Kroenke. and uh, he does put his own money in that's what i'm going with well it, it's it's going to go a little further back than that but it's going to it's going to give some perspective it's going to give a a very thorough comparison to how the other sports that he owns teams in work. Uh, haven't they, his other teams, haven't like the, the lacrosse one, the, the ice hockey one and the basketball one all won something. The basketball no, team NFL. is good, but they haven't won anything. It's the NFL, the, wasn't it? Yeah. The hockey team won uh, the, the Stanley cup, which is, I mean, that, that team that they put together is amazing. That's Andy's team, isn't it? It is Andy's team, and he was at the – well, no, he was at the game where they could have won, but they lost, and then they won the next game in Tampa. So the, so the big – You can't moment, have seven finals in a cup final. It's bullshit. No, it's the best of seven, and it went uh, it went six games. But uh, but they won that. The Rams won the Super Bowl. Uh, the lacrosse team, which, I mean, it, it's such a niche, niche sport. Nobody, like, actually watches that. Um, but they won the championship, and, and I will be explaining why – it is very different uh, when they spend money on a player over there versus over here. 
Uh, well, they don't they, go to spend wages, didn't they? They don't have to pay thirty million transfer fee. It's it, well, that's part of it. Uh, it's not all of it though. But the, it is not a, a, a Stan Kroenke apologist video because I, it, it's going to start off with every reason I hate him, and and why they don't deserve to be uh, you know liked. But uh, it, there are certain things to keep straight and certain things not to. So that'll be the next uh, one. And answer uh, me this, Feinberg, speak. before we go. What he he owns. That the the KSE own quite a few clubs in different sports, don't they? Is that a regular thing for American people to own? We know we know the blokes who own the Red Sox own Liverpool, but uh, is that a thing over there that you own franchises in more than one sport? Strange, and is his strangely. winning three titles with three different types of sport? Is that some kind of record? The- it's the first time that anyone's been the reigning champions in the NFL and and hockey at the same time, or the NFL and basketball. You don't you don't have a lot of owners who own both a American football team and one of the indoor sports. the The two big indoor sports are are hockey and basketball. I don't think there's ever been a dual champion like at the same time in hockey and basketball. I'm sorry, in um, in football and basketball, or in football and hockey until now. Um, but, uh, usually you have a lot of dual owners with a football team now with proper football team, but not one that basically has a team in every sport. And Stan Kroenke technically doesn't own the hockey or the basketball team because the NFL won't let him, but his son is the chairman and his wife owns them. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, it's kind of a sham. I mean, you know, it's they they just changed the, the the signature on it but there's one team that Stan Kroenke cares about and it is the Rams and that is true but it isn't fair in my opinion or true to claim that he doesn't do anything for Arsenal has never spent any money has never and there are circumstances around it that make it different so uh, so anyway that's what the next show is going to be about I will try to have it be as balanced as possible um but uh but yeah so that's what i'm working on now we should be back on the gooners podcast with a handful of shows this week guests to be announced um but uh that's it going on for us what's what's abw up to these days craig's in the house hey craig oh good to see crazy you boy um hello well we have got nothing i did i have got put something in the group um about something that i thought would be a good idea to do so we might do something like that we've had the whole of the end of may all of june off chris has done some stuff chris has probably got some more stuff lined up he likes doing that one and one series but i've got sean back for the next week um so i won't be doing much and uh i think she's going i think she's buggering off next saturday so she's here from monday to friday and it's the first time i've seen i think i've seen her once in end of may and then I saw her again in probably March. So she's completely abandoned her parents. And that's what thanks we get for making sure she got a decent education and sorting out her going to university. Well, she did the hard work. I just said, sort your life out, you silly cow. So much for that that's reunion uh, of, of family that's going to last. So next well, I can't Sunday, go anywhere, can I? Next Sunday, we'll be back at 9 o'clock. The following two weeks... Um, I will be doing the traveling road show. Uh, I'll, I've just arrived in Orlando, and then the following Sunday I'll still be in Orlando. Uh, but we'll, we'll we'll definitely be able to report on how the summer tour is going. So uh, do I have to find replacements? I don't believe so. I should be able to. Oh, lovely. From Make sure my, you set up so we can see the, your view from your five-star luxury hotel. It, it, I will be in Airbnb in, uh, in both Baltimore and Orlando. Whoop, whoop. So, um, so yeah, so the Sunday roast continues, even when we had nothing to talk about, like tonight, it ends up. Have we ever had anything to talk about though, Michael? No, I don't think so. No. And we've done 20 episodes so far. Well, thanks to the almost 40 of you that are here. Uh, if you like the show, the please, please, uh, what do you do when you like the show? Uh, uh, the no, thumb, you... There's something about a thumbs up or something. Yeah, Trust and if you, if, you, if you do like the cut of Mike's jib, I mean, everybody here knows, but go over to the YouTube and type in uh, the Gooners podcast. And if Tom's podcast comes up, unsubscribe to that and give it a thumbs down and then subscribe to Mike's podcast because him and my, him and other Mike and... Uh, actually, Visions of a Sea, 
Things of a C. Oh, for God's sake. You can even go to Jared. Jim. Doesn't begin with a C. There's Jared. Yeah. And there's uh, you, and there's Mike, and there's e nine 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 nine, and there's that other bloke whose name I really can't remember. I think it might be Andy. How is he? He is a, a, a boy from Hemel yes. Hempstead who grew mm. up and doesn't want to be English no more. Have you heard his English accent? Can he do it again? He won't. He do, it comes out every once in a while with certain words, but when he gets but, he gets beard out. He goes, "You what?" I think I could do a better English accent at this point. Don't, than don't do it. End the show. For God's sake, right. save us. This has been episode 20 of the Sunday Roast. Goodbye, cheeky monkeys. Goodbye. Thanks for watching the Ooh. Sunday Roast oh, yeah. with Mike and Danny. That, that's me. This was Mike. <laughs> And this was Dan. <laughs> and we ride dolphins. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> Bird Lano. And here's Sexy Mike. Oh, I'm riding a sexy. horse. You're in the background. Did you notice? Danny I know. Loves I his junk food. Time. We know he does. I like sweets. And Mike does tricks. Really yeah, we it's me. love wow. football. That's all cool but hate talking about that it. Dangerous. So we made this show. That's Why you brilliant. watch it, we don't <laughs> know. Here we go. The Sunday Roast is a joint production of a Burke Camp Wonderland and the Gooners Podcast. Join us every Sunday night at 10 o'clock for all the entertainment you didn't know you needed, but you cannot live without. See you next week.